We are never done with our lives, and it takes so much effort, and that's kind of the journey, isn't it? We're going to be talking about being never done. Being never done is a, an infinite target. As a minimalist, you'll never be finished. It will always go on. There won't be an end point for you. You won't just suddenly get to one method and just go, well, I have all my duff things in a duffel bag. I have nothing left to do. You just won't get there. You will go through phases and changes in your life. Just like we were talking about last month, we talked about equilibrium. And that was what gave me a better view on how my minimalism was going to transition and shift through my life. This shifting target was a very difficult thing for me to be okay with. I want there to be a finite end to things. And there's just not really a finite end. There are stages and goals that you can go through in your life. Just like we have being like stone and water, you will make a goal. You will go and approach that goal and do everything you can to get there. And then you'll reach that goal. And then you do what? That's where I got a little bit stuck. And then you go to your next goal and you just keep letting that life scream past you like being like a stone in water. And that's that equilibrium that I was just talking about. Minimalist philosophy applies mechanisms of internal automation transmuting it to an external automation. So you have an internal amount of minimalism. The managing yourself, being transparent with yourself, developing those tools and those processes for yourself, and then that transmutes into or changes into external automation. The shift from symbiotic to parasitic relationships is what minimalism helps manage. Minimalism gives you a framework with which you want to work in. Uh, the promises of bloggers is just one part that we have. The promise of travel, freedom. And the other part of that promise is linked to the framework of minimalism. That framework is built from the internal automation, the how I'm going to do my life, how I'm going to proceed forward and do that for me, and then the external automation part. Getting to that freedom and travel comes from that framework and developing that process through that automation. And when you have that, you won't have to work as hard to minimize everything in your life. Travel is not just the hard concept of getting on a plane or train or boat or your car and driving somewhere or going somewhere else. Travel is also travel forward in your life through that equilibrium and how you maintain that. You're never done with that minimalism. And when you're transitioning through each one of those goal phases, you get to a goal and then you move forward, that's still travel. Yes, it's not your physical travel, it may have physical travel attached to it, but there's still that traveling forward. So think not just of how minimalist channels will tell you you can have wealth, freedom, travel, but travel not just in a hard sense, but also in a softer sense of you moving forward through your life. When I was 22, I thought that I had done everything I needed to do in my life. I had gotten into college, I had the car that I wanted, I had the apartment, all the friends, and I had all the things. And I thought to myself, well, I'm done. And I realized I wasn't really done. And what that triggered was, was a two-year period of being bored. Boredom is helpful, but it's not altogether the most, the best place that you want to stay in. Boredom can be the mother of a lot of invention, as it's said, and boredom did help me move forward, but I didn't know what I was doing. I was just bored and wasn't satisfied with my life, and most of my negative tendencies came out, and that's what I subsisted on for so long. And I had thought that I was just dumb. I didn't have anywhere else to go. But I realized that I did have somewhere else to go. It wasn't the end of everything. I was only 22. I have a whole life, at least 70 years from that point going forwards, that I had to take care of, figure out what to do. And so that boredom changed. I started looking at myself and thinking and being introspective about why was I bored? What did I really want from my life? And what I realized was is that I have to maintain these things. This is the concept of that stewardship, hence the name of the channel that the stewardship is that I have to take care of my life. 
not just the things in my life or the relationships in my life, but the stewardship of myself. That me being bored was me just copping out, really, and not going for anything, not setting a goal, not setting an intention, and not applying myself. And I realized the maintenance of my family, the maintenance of my relationships, the objects in my life, that is the equilibrium. And that's the idea of the I'm never done. A minimalist is always going to continue to minimize their life and transition through phases as they go forward in their lives. When I was reconsidering my life and being bored in this really nice apartment that I had, I thought to myself, what do I want out of this? And I started looking around and most of the stuff I didn't want. I talked about the coats that I had, so many coats, it was a problem, and I had so many clothes and errant furniture and just nothing that I cared about or that really added any value to my life. Minimalism provided a framework for me to start thinking, do I really care about this thing? Do I want this thing? And that's what started my process of minimalism in an intentional way, in a conscious way. Because before I was doing it sort of subconsciously, I just didn't like stuff, and then I just got rid of it. And that's been a theme through all my life, but it was all subconscious. And then when I became bored, or was the mother of all invention, I realized that I needed that minimalism and I started being conscious about my choices of the things that were in my life and taking responsibility and holding myself accountable. And that's how minimalism helped me move forward. I had to be transparent with myself primarily. I had to really think, is this what I want? Do I really like me now? Do I like my situations now? Me back at 22. And I didn't. I didn't like any of it. And so began a long process of developing that equilibrium and realizing I was never going to be done. But it didn't upset me. And I was very grateful that I wasn't going to be done because that meant I had so much more life to live and I had so much more to do and experience and it opened up a whole new realm of possibilities for me, especially when I applied the minimalism as a tool to help progress my life forward through that equilibrium. Just like the me of 22, I decided to make a list of the things that I was never going to be done with. Now, I had ne will never be done eating, sleeping, blinking so we can see, our heart has to continue beating, and there's some of these subconscious things that we have to do, but take it to more of a conscious level. So this week with our tools, just like I was doing at 22, write a list of the things that you're never going to be done with, the things that you have to maintain, as it stands right now for you. I'll be doing the same thing and I'll post that to the Instagram. So make sure that you take a look at that and see how what things I'm never done with. Once you've made your list of the things that you'll never be done with or that you have to have an equilibrium with to help you progress and set those goals in your life, post those on our Instagram channel. See what your list is and share with everybody else because sometimes people don't know everything. I know it's shocking, but we don't know all the things in our life. And that's part of the journey. That's part of that equilibrium. For me, so, small secret, that is one of the things I'm never done with. I'm never going to be done learning. I'm never going to be done learning these new things from people and being presented with these concepts that are alien, foreign to me. And that's the exciting part of life. Like, comment, and subscribe as well. And in that comment, remember, add your never done list so we can see how you progressed forward. Stay curious as always, and we'll see you next week.